What's up, gents and gals? This is Josh. And it's Martin. And we're the Gentle Fellas. Today, we are doing a top 10 abandoned places in Ontario. We got a whole list, so yeah, we're going to go along them. And, and if you guys have any better options, put them in the comments below, and we'll make sure that we'll do another list on those. Yeah. And at number 10, we got St. James Catholic Church, which was located in Mallorytown, Yongship, which was its first and only church. The construction of the church was completed in 1861, and the first ever Mass was held on Christmas Day prior of that year. St. James Catholic Church also became an independent parish in 1884, and the first ever pastor's name was W.E. Walshie, and he was appointed as the pastor on December 27, 1885. St. James Church also had a graveyard, which was south of the church on Catholic Church Road. The, the cemetery was cremated in July 13, 1869 by R.T. Rev. E.J. Hogan. However, according to records, the cemetery has been in use as a burial site since at least 1847. By 1971, fewer than 23 families were regularly attending St. James Catholic Church. They decided to close the church on March 15, 1972. The church was abandoned building for several decades. Then it has suffered a, a fire that started on September 28, 2019, which left it into its current state. So number nine on our list is going to be Mohawk Island, formerly known as Gall Island. The island contains the ruins of Gall Island Lighthouse. It is on Lake Fort Erie in Ontario, Canada. It is no longer automated. The lighthouse was built in 1848 to guide ships along to the Welland Canal. Currently, there is no humans that live on the island. It is actually only... Uh, inhabited by birds at the moment and it is known as a bird nesting protection site so you're not actually allowed to go to the island uh, there are local boaters that you'll see going around the island um, frequently just to look at the island but you don't actually see people going on the island very often uh, and it was also decommissioned in 1969 and coming in at number eight we have an abandoned mansion hidden in the forest this was owned by a military man who actually owned 16 different other farms in Ontario. He, along with his wife, consolidated the land into a horse farm, and that included a racetrack and barns and also a pasture area. The property was sold to a family in 1969 that owned a drugstore. Celebrities that have stayed inside the mansion has is Perry Trudeau, Prince Philip, and Princess Margaret. The property was used from the family seasonally until they chose to donate the entire parcel of land to the Canadian to a Canadian university in 1995. The property is now used for natural studies and you should avoid being on it due to the environment studies that take place. There are cameras and police that will ticket you if you park nearby. Also, the ban the mansion is all boarded up now. So number 7 in our list is Alma College in St. Thomas, Ontario. Alma College was a girls private school built in 1878. The focus of teaching in the school was on liberal arts Arts, sports and cultivating. The school included the main building, a chapel, gymnasium, an outdoor amphitheater. Alma College was rumored to be haunted by a ghost named Angela. The rumors were placed in 1830s. Angela was to haunt one of the towers nicknamed the Ivory Towers. Theories of the ghost being the spirit of an evil teacher or past disgruntled students were popular. Angela was said to be one of the responsible for moving objects around the art room and for the creaky footsteps heard from students in the Alma stairs at night. So the Alma College closed in 1988 and in 2016 there was an arson that happened and set the whole place ablaze. Coming in at number six we got St. Thomas Psychiatric Hospital. In uh, August of uh, 1937 construction began on what was known as the Ontario Hospital St. Thomas built on the land of six area farm families for the purpose of treating people with psychiatric illness. It first accepted its patients in 1939. By, by the August of the same year almost 1,100 patients had come to reside at the hospital. Its greatest capacity was 2,400 patients. Even before construction was complete, the hospital was known as the finest mental hospital in the country because of its modern design. The site included 460 acres of land for the facility's food and produce needs. Um, in 1997, the St. Thomas Mental Hospital closed their doors. Coming up on number five on our list is an abandoned shipwreck in Tobamori, Ontario. The shipwreck is called the Niagara II. It was originally built in England in 1930 by the Fernies Shipbuilding Company. It was originally named the Rigulite 
and worked for Imperial Oil, running between Montreal and Ottawa. Subsequently, it was renamed the Imperial Lachine in, eight, in 1954. It was renamed in 1954 the Toronto Dry Rock Dock Limited. To this date, the name of the boat is the Niagara II. It was purchased by the Tobamori Marine Associates for 40K in 1998, and it was towed from Lake Erie to Tobamori, and it was sunk with the aid of explosives, and is now one of Tobamori's most popular dive site. This wreck lies about 100 feet deep in the water in Georgian Bay. It's outside the harbor of Tobamori, Ontario. Most of the wreck can be dove down in about 70 to 80 feet rain. Coming up at number four, we have Burwash Correction Facility. It was opened up in Killary, Ontario in 1914, and it housed over a thousand prisoners that worked at the prison and at its farm, leaving the red brick building to the elements and a handful of peaceful adventurers. Today, the dilapidated halls of the correction centers are marked of the peeling paint and graffiti, broken glass and creepy weeds, and surrounding communities now left to crumble in frigid Ontario air. Coming in at number three on our list is the Aurelia Asylum in Aurelia, Ontario. Aurelia Institution was first opened in 1876. In the early years, the institution's pollution ballooned and overcrowding was a chronic problem. Renamed the Ontario Hospital in 19... 19- it became self-sufficient village with several hundred patients and staff. Later, it became the Ontario Hospital School. But overcrowding and squalid conditions continued to plague, and the institution was forced into a focus of number of investigations. In 1973, the institution was renamed again, this time to the Heronia Regional Center. Its closure in 2009 came as former residents launched legal action against the institution. Since 2009, this building has been abandoned. So coming in at number two, we got Boblo Island Amusement Park. It opened its doors in 1898. With whirling rides, organ music, and brightly colored lights, it attracted thousands to the shore of its little island to reveal wholesome fun. For almost a hundred years, it was only accessed by classic steam-powered river boats. Brought passengers from Detroit, each boat could bring up to 2,000 pa- visitors at the time. Smaller ferries brought visitors from nearby Armensburg, Ontario, and but the old-fashioned charm of Boblo Island was eclipsed by more modern attractions like Cedar Point in its later decades, leading to its closures and its gates for good in 1993. Coming, Coming in, in at number one, we got Splatalot Game Show in Amherst, Ontario. The abandoned Splatalot Game Show set was the site of an hilarious medieval themed physical game show geared to to a tween audience featuring an extreme obstacle course with leaps heaps and loads of splats and spills each episode featured a different group of thrill-seeking teens contestants a dubbed attackers competing in three hilarious rounds across the moat uh, escaping the stottercade and it captured the clown. The defenders of Splatalot of the natural squad of themed gladiators do their best to protect the castle from the attack, leaving one of the crown king or Splatalot queen. The filming of Splatalot began in Amherst, Ontario back in September of 2010. The show was aired on YTV, ABC Australia, and BBC in England, as well as Disney TV, and Nickelodeon in the United States. And it lasted two seasons. The show stopped filming in 2015, leaving it abandoned to all the elements outdoors. So now it is taken back over by the earth. All right, guys, that was our top 10 abandoned places in Ontario. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to turn on your post notifications for future content. Yeet, yeet. Take care.